Okay, in this uh, clip I'm going to go ahead and continue through with uh, some features that Summit has available uh, that you could use and how you would be able to utilize these features. So in our last clip we went ahead and we uh, brought the uh, repair order in, we opened the repair order, uh, we printed our RO pack, and I want to pick up uh, on my next step. Um, what I tend to, to uh, like to do at that time is I like to go ahead and I do a pre-repair checklist with a customer on a drop-off appointment. So I'm going to highlight our uh, custom forms. Um, you're going to go down and you have an opportunity to do 50 custom forms. Now these custom forms could be your pre-repair checklist, could be uh, forms that uh, you may need filled out uh, for your insurance partners, say direction of pay. So anything that's in a work file, you can cut and paste right into the program, or you can develop your own custom forms. And um, let me go ahead and uh, open this up big, and I'll show you that this is a custom form that I, uh, I use, and this is on my drop-off appointment. So um, what I do is I have Summit pre-populating the information, taking it out of the administrative, and it's putting the uh, information of the owner's vehicle here. At that time, um, again, thinking about having a uh, iPad or a uh, tablet, uh, you can go ahead and do this all digitally with a uh, customer. I could be in front of the car with a customer doing the uh, pre-repair checklist and possibly taking photographs of the vehicle after I've mapped it with the customer. And what we're doing is we're looking at uh, un prior unrelated damage here. So I can go in and I can uh, put the date in. I can go ahead and go over with the customer any lights that's on in the dash, how much gas uh, is in the vehicle and I can go ahead and work through this as I'm walking the car with a customer. So we can go ahead and look and see, uh, say, any damage on the tires, um, where the damage is located, uh, if there's any glass breakage, um, if there's any prior unrelated damage here. And then what we could do is go to the bottom possibly, and we can go ahead and have uh, the CSR or your writer uh, sign, and then the customer would be able to date it. Now at that time I can go to save and I can save it into the media library. So I'm going to go ahead and take you into uh, the media library to give you an opportunity to see what it could be possible if you decide to put some of these steps in place. So again this vehicle just arrived, it's on lot, um, and we're going through certain pieces of the business that we've established your a customer service representative, technical customer service representative, estimator is going to do. Now what we're doing is we're establishing a more process-centered environment that we can have a predictable outcome and be able to communicate well from one department to the other. So this particular person is doing their piece of the business and they're going to warmly hand it off to the next department. And again, we'll go over the departmental status but I think that this is going to give us a better opportunity to understand that departmental concept and the 14 customizable departments, whether a portion of it is admin or it is production, this is going to give you a clearer snapshot of how Summit's arranged and how Summit can help you identify a process-centered environment. We all have a process, we just don't have it as transparent today as it could be. So this is giving you the opportunity to see how Summit uh, can help you develop that and sustain that process-centered environment. So I went ahead and I've done a custom form, and I went ahead and went over to the Media tab. We talked about the primary tabs. Now, in this repair order that we're working on, we have an opportunity to do a scan of all documents. So we'll talk a little bit about scanning the documents. Um, could you see your front counter uh, having a opportunity to scan all of the documents that you're currently storing in file folders? So this is an opportunity to go paperless. So there isn't anything in the file folder that couldn't be scanned in and kept electronically to help you better organize your office and your administrative work. You can always go ahead and recall this information at any given time. It's held electronically and six months from now I can go back and I can pull up this particular RO and this information for this customer would be there. So what I'd like to encourage is a possibility that say for instance a customer came in and they have a, um, a estimate that they had already gotten in the drive-in claim center. 
Well, we can go ahead and scan that in at this time by going ahead and putting the information on the scanner and hitting scan. Now, what, what, what it'll do is it'll bring all of the information right here in unclassified categories. So what I've done is I've arranged certain categories, and I've done some of this work prior to starting the video, so it wasn't uh, lengthy. And if you look, I've went ahead and I've arranged all of my administrative scans right here in the administrative files. So at any given time, if I want to look in, say for instance, this is the estimate that the customer came in with, the writer, if they're in another area, and the customer service representative has galleried this information, then the writer has an opportunity to go in and he can view it, print it, whatever the case may be, but it's held electronically. What's really cool about this is we have an opportunity to also gallery our parts files, our payment history, and even our supplement files, so that at a glance, I can go in and, and identify exactly what I'm looking for and be able to put my finger on it immediately. So right now, we're, we're really looking at the uh, pre-repair checklist, and here it is, and we went over that with the customer. But what's really unique is the opportunity that if we've taken photographs of the drop-off appointment, we, there's a opportunity here to be able to have all of the photographs on that drop-off appointment, especially if you're mapping the vehicle or leaving any notes on the vehicle. So all you would do is your customer service representative or your estimator would go down to add, and they would go ahead and add the images. Now again, the same goes for, we also have an opportunity to customize the areas that you're going to drop the images in. And I can drop these images right into pre-repair photos, and I can also keep my supplemental photos as well. So there's no reason why you can't bring your photos into Summit and what is relevant is that a lot of insurance companies don't want to see photographs uploaded of uh, mapping. Some of them uh, are a little sensitive to it. And also, they don't want to have an abundance of photos where you have an opportunity to take as many photos if, they're go if the vehicle's being mapped for prior and related damage or the photographs are being taken as you go through the production steps and just say, for instance, uh, you're taking photographs on the shop floor they can be added into this uh, area as well and also deposited in whatever you decide as your categories that you'd like to gallery these so you can have easy access to look at just supplemental photos. So that gives you an uh, overview of the media. Um, in the job itself, again, we talked about communication. And in that communication, there's an opportunity to go ahead and put notes in on the file. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just give you a quick look at what that is. When you go into put a note, each user has their unique username that they're logged in under their profile in Summit. So what it's going to do is Summit's going to timestamp a date when that note went in and give you an opportunity to have some expanded notes so you can communicate amongst each other and your staff. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and write a test in here so you can see what it looks like and I'm going to save it. Now this note could be uh, uh, customer request items, this note could be something uh, pertaining to uh, payment, uh, the, the, uh, possibly the deductible um, may have been prepaid, or we have a check that we've uh, gotten from the owner, or some direction on where the, uh, the check's coming from, direction of pay, or how we've represented or, or, or gathered information from the owner. So what I've done is I've went ahead and put an expanded note in, it's time stamped and dated on the person that put the note in, and then I'm just going to go ahead and save that. So I want to point out at the top of this screen that these are notes as well, and these notes are system-generated notes. So every action your person takes that's logged into Summit, it's going to record the notes, a note on when something occurred. So right now you can see that um, on this vehicle I have a, an insurance authorization and I've converted the, the uh, repair order over and it gives you a, the person that did it, the date and time. This could be very powerful information that you can use, uh, especially um, 
on parts. Uh, we can go ahead and when we put parts on order and, and uh, receive parts, you can see exactly what time and date those parts came in. And you can always refer back to these notes. So when you get a call from an insurance company that, that feels that you've taken a little longer on the repair and maybe possibly looking for rental uh, money, you can go back and really look at the history and see if there was any disruption in your original repair plan, what may have caused you a delay. Um, and this is something that I've used this, uh, this piece of the software for. So again, we'll go over that in more detail. Uh, we can talk about it in person if you'd like or over the telephone. But this is just giving you kind of an outline of what power is available to you and what form of communication is there. So I'm going to X out. And at this time, um, back to the departmental concept, the uh, customer service representative, the estimator, whatever the case may be, has just finished their piece of the business and they're ready to move the vehicle to the next step. So this opens up an opportunity for me to show you the production uh, steps and talk about the 14 departments. So we'll talk about the 14 departments first. As you can see, I have 14 departments and one of them is arranged as scheduled and the vehicle is on lot. Then we obviously have a disassembly blueprint department and we, all, we have a, a parts order and then a dispatch. So these are really administrative and these are working your administrative steps prior to the vehicle going into your production steps. So we have 14 customizable departments. You call them what you, what you want. We mirror what, you're, what you currently are doing in your, your administrative or your production steps. Um, at this time, you can see that I have a vehicle that's outlined. And the vehicle that's outlined is the vehicle up in the information bar that we want to move from one department to the next. So I'm going to go ahead and grab and drag and drop the vehicle to the next department. And that gives me an opportunity to show you the departmental concept as well as what subtle disciplines are in place to help your staff be better directed and understand what your expectation is for them to be doing. So here I have a departmental checklist, so things to do list, that asks your person that just finished their piece of the business have we taken care of these items? And what they're going to do is they're going to check off their things to do list. So did we do the pre-repair checklist walk around? Have we taken the photos and mapped the vehicle? Have we set the status method of payment confirmation uh, or communication? Did we print the RO pack, tag the keys, and put the window sticker in the car? Very basic, but sometimes people need this direction. Do we have the authorization repair and did we scan all the documentation into our management system? At this time, they're going to check mark the box and complete and say they've finished their task. So what we have is an opportunity for you to go in and see that the tasks are either pending or complete. As soon as I hit OK, it will timestamp and date when these items have been done in the scheduled in process, we have on lot process. So these are your 14 departments. And I've just went ahead and completed these departmental steps. And I can print this off. And this helps hold accountability, be able to help you um, train or cross train your folks so that you can communicate and it could be your voice in their ear at any given time. These are the items that I want to have done prior to the vehicle moving on to the next department. So that gives you an opportunity to see what the departmental concept looks like. And at this time, we have an opportunity to look at the sub-department. This feature can be turned on or turned off. I have this turned on for the demo just so that you have an opportunity to see what, it, what it, you can utilize it for. So say you have a tow and it's a possible total loss. We can go ahead and tag the vehicle as a possible total loss so that we can communicate with our staff so our staff when they look at the RO, they have a, 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 a more information pertaining to the vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and use possible total loss so I can show you how this works. So at the top of your screen, remember we have a status and we have an information bar. At any time, at a glance, when you scroll through your vehicles in the department, you'll see that this vehicle is in disassembly blueprint, just been moved there because I just moved it into the department from on lot to disassembly. And at this time, I have the vehicle, I'm communicating that it could be a possible total loss. 
So that gives you an opportunity to see how the, the, the uh, sub-department works. And these are all customizable we as well, so you can customize them to your uh, liking and what you would want to communicate. And then each department has its own set of sub-departments that you can go ahead and build out. So I'm going to conclude this portion of the video, and then I'll go ahead and work on the next step in the process to give you an opportunity to see exactly what um, you have to your advantage uh, by utilizing a body shop management software. I thank you.